the consciousness is mainly the following, that there's a duality in us. We are all dual or plural people, mm -hmm. which we have several personalities. And in our daily life, we have to use our intellect, because without it, we are completely lost. We, couldn't, we wouldn't be able to work, function, do anything. But then the, the, the mistake that we make is that when we don't need our intellect for practical applications or for professional applications, we have a lot of psychological thoughts, mm -hmm. which are completely unnecessary. And those psychological thoughts are the barrier to a spiritual world. What, that's why, why most religions, well, all religions fail, except for, a, for very few people who practice them. Because what good does it do it if you go to a church or a synagogue or a mosque? If uh, you pray, right, once a week or even every day, and then all of these psychological thoughts come to you and destroy what you have achieved. Mm -hmm. nothing, nothing comes out of that. In other words, it takes a lot of awareness. Yes to be able to, to say, okay, now there's a psychological thought coming, it's like a cloud, I'm not going to hang to it, but you simply let it go. Let it go. Yeah. And how many people do that in the world? I think very few. <laughs> but, but I think maybe it's because it's really confronting also to, to get to know yourself on that kind of level. Maybe well, that's why people close their eyes, because it's easier. Well, first of all, our lives are full of tensions. And these tensions, for instance, if you, are, if you want to create something and you are under tension, whatever you create is going to be simply a visual or sound effects, which will create from time to time some emotions on other people, mm -hmm. but nothing more than that. Yeah. To be able to create something deeper, you have to be completely without any tensions or with a minimum of tensions. If you take Rembrandt or Van Gogh or Beethoven and so on, mm -hmm. you cannot say that they were mystics. <laughs> they were very far from being mystics. Mm -hmm. But they had a quality which uh, other people don't have. One is to open up for that energy to come to them and then get rid of the tensions that create, that everyday life creates. And this is what distinguishes a great artist. That plus the talent to express himself yeah. or herself. Yes. It's, it's the combination of these two things. It's not being a mystic, but simply for a moment, absolutely to be so concentrated in, in your work and so open that you are full of energy and you create while you are with that energy that you have. Now, since most people are not capable of doing that, then they create an intellectual art. Mm -hmm. conceptual art and this is what they teach this is what they appreciate and then they form like a mafia <laughs> a conceptual mafia in the world which is uh, museum curators gallery owners publishers and so on and so mm -hmm. teachers and so on and so forth without realizing that what they have done is very superficial or what they are doing and this is one of the main problems now, when someone comes to my school, what, what I teach is something different from other teachers. Because I cannot tell the person, okay, now do choose this direction. Mm -hmm. Because if he chooses that direction, which is more spiritual, he won't make a career. Yeah. And there are people who want to make a career, yes. want to be famous and so on. Okay, fine. There are other teachers who will teach you how to do it, yeah. but not me. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the main difference. And that's a choice that you that's make. That's a choice, yeah. but I, I don't tell students, well, do it the way I, I am telling you, because I'm not a dogmatic person. Mm -hmm. Now, you see what happens in, in art, or with a work of art, is that it's, there is a triangle. One is the author, or the creator. The second one is the work itself, which could be material or immaterial, like in music. And the third one is the spectator, which is either an auditor or someone who is a viewer. Now it takes those three things to create a work of, a work of art. In other words, do you realize that you, as a viewer, are part of the work of art? 
Yeah. Without yes. you, there is no art. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like a sound, right? Yeah. right? The sound is waves in the air, right? Now, if there is no person, animal, or who has a hearing mechanism, right, or hearing mm -hmm. system, there is no sound. No, someone has to hear it. <laughs> That's right. And this is the same thing with the work of art. Yeah. If there is no one who has the sensitivity to appreciate it and the openness, there is no work of art. Mm -hmm. If I go to a museum, for instance, I went to the uh, National Gallery in uh, Dublin, mm -hmm. and there is a, there's a Vermeer there, one Vermeer. There are two Rembrandts, one Vermeer, mm -hmm. and also some other, some other paintings. But I spent, I think, two months in Dublin. Okay, so first time I go to the gallery, right after my trip from Warsaw to Dublin, and I look at those paintings and I say, okay, fine, very, very nice, nothing more. Then I go one month later, oh, I'm beginning to feel something. Mm -hmm. Then I go just before I return to Warsaw, when I'm completely out of tension, and then what I have to do is sit down, do some breathing exercises for 15 or 20 minutes to relax completely and make sure also that there is no, no one around. So when I look at the painting, uh, I'm by myself. Yeah. I tell my students, as a joke of course, well, eat a lot of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> so they stay away. <laughs> <laughs> so they stay away. And at that moment, after two months of relaxing, I begin to feel the energy coming out from some of the paintings. Mm -hmm. And then I participate in the work of art. So you, you have to take the time to... Yes, yeah. but it's a whole preparation. Yeah. It's, a, it's a whole preparation from my point of view. If I go to a concert, then I don't listen to music for about two days. Mm -hmm. Before the concert, several hours, I don't speak with anybody. And then when I go to a concert and the two ladies begin to speak before the concert, <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a good thing that I don't not uh, <laughs> an aggressive person. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking of my own uh, um, experiences, but I have visited concerts before, and then I'm I'm halfway through, and I'm like, I just want to go home. This is too much, and I can't appreciate it. So maybe it's a good idea to to take. Yes, some but time. it's but it's not only that. The problem is, is with the interpretation, mm -hmm. because again, it's the same problem. One is. Conductors, musicians, and so on are not sensitive enough to the relations between the sounds. That's one thing. And another thing is that uh, they are not conscious of certain structures that is uh, in, the, in the music itself that you have to respect. Mm -hmm. Because no one teaches them in the, in the conservatories. It's the same problem that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. There comes a teacher, they, they learn, for instance, to play the violin or the trumpet or the piano technically without fault. Yeah. Fantastic, right? Technically, the younger generation is getting better and better. Yeah. The problem is with imposing an interpretation. The teacher tells him, this is the way you should play. Mm -hmm. And then the poor student does the same thing. Yeah. But it doesn't come from the inside. And then that's why you get bored. I also get bored. Yeah. And then in the middle of the concert, I leave. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I paid, I don't know, fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Or oh, it's a waste. It was a waste of money. Yeah. But yeah. it's their fault because they are not conscious of what music is about. Okay. So it's not my fault. No, it's not your <laughs> fault. If you are relaxed and if you are concentrated in the music, because the the main problem that people do. The main problem is with people when they are listening to music is that they are thinking of something else. Yeah. And if you do that, then it's your fault. I but it's that. also but it's also the fault of the interpreter. Mm -hmm. Because if the interpretation is right, then you get so absorbed that you don't think of other things. Mm -hmm. So it it requires a double training. Yeah. You as an auditor who has to get rid of other thoughts and the interpreter who has to get to the right interpretation. Now, if both fail, <laughs> you are wasting $50. Yes, <laughs> waste of money. That's right. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. So this is what I uh, 
learned from Celi Bidatke mm -hmm. was, for instance, how, how, the, how music is structured, what are the things that you have to look for, and then I translated it into an image, mm -hmm. into images, what is it that you have to look for in images? Mm 